Um, thanks for recording. Uh, we will go ahead and get started now. Sorry, the agenda look a little different, like the format. So I'm like, hey, what's happening here? Um, but we'll get started with our welcome. <laughs> um, sorry, going through the agenda real quick. Uh, let's see, where are we? So welcome to introductions and announcements. So um, we can start with a roll call, Gariana. That would be helpful. Shannon Ortland. Present. Beto Garibay. Present. <laughs> Patrice Guillory. Present. Gilbert Salinas. Present. Shayla Bonner. Present. And Matthew Malone. Present. We have four members in person. Quorum is established. Thank you. And then next we'll just go in the room um, if folks could introduce themselves and then we'll pass it to Zoom. Good afternoon, Peter Kim, Office of Racial Equity and Social Justice. Hi there, Jill Ray with the Office of Supervisor Candace Anderson. Thank you. And then we'll pass. Was that everybody in the room? I'm sorry. Did I miss anybody? Okay, and then I'll pass it to Gariana. Hi, Gariana Youngblood, Office of Reentry and Justice. Chris? Good afternoon, Chris James with the W. Hayward Burns Institute. Kendra? Hi, everyone. Kendra Carr from the Office of Racial Equity and Social Justice. Um, Cheryl? Buenos dias, Cheryl Sadis. Buenos dias, actually. Cheryl Sadis. Thank so, you. And, and Rachel? Hi, I'm Rachel Belden from the Contra Costa County Public Defender's Office. Did I miss anybody? I don't want to leave anybody out. Cool. Are there any announcements at this time? I'd like to share um, that we at ORJ and in the probation department, we're really excited. Uh, we recently issued an RFP for our restorative justice youth violence prevention pilot project. It's a very long name. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Um, many of you may have been part of our uh, work over the last year or so, almost a year and a half. Uh, pretty much, uh, where we have engaged uh, the community to uh, determine the best ways we could utilize our Measure X dollars to have a community-based restorative justice effort. Uh, we conducted a needs assessment that, where we released a report on um, some of the information that we gathered uh, from all across the county, and um, that uh, report then provided the sort of foundation as to how we would shape this uh, particular uh, pilot project that we are now uh, soliciting um, some responses for. Uh, just on Monday, we had a bidders conference here in this room. We had a wonderful turnout of various organizations, uh, many of whom are CBOs and also some school district representatives, uh, a, a ton of groups that we haven't in the past uh, worked uh, all that closely with. So. We're excited about where it's headed. Um, the deadline for the uh, for proposals uh, will be on October 22nd. Following that, we'll go through a review process and hopefully have a notice of award recommendations uh, sometime in November. So really excited about it. We'll continue to keep um, our, jo our job up to speed on, on this work as we engage some of the members um, in, in the restorative justice initiative as well. Thanks, Patrice. Any other announcements? Yeah, our office has a few announcements too. Um, you might need to come. Oh, okay. Uh, or, or, so um, one is uh, our Office of Racial Equity and Social Justice is hiring. So we currently have two job positions that we are recruiting for. So those are open and live. Um, one is for a data analyst. The other is for a policy and budget analyst. And uh, the recruitment will be open. Kendra, is it until uh, October 14th? What's the date that closes? 16th, October 16th. October 16th, thanks. Um, we also 
have an open solicitation, a request for qualifications that's open right now, uh, soliciting for a community foundation or similar entity to help administer contracts uh, towards improving and expanding African-American holistic wellness uh, here in Contra Costa County. Uh, that solicitation closes next Friday on October 4th. Um, and that, or that entity that's selected will help administer contracts uh, that are actually going to be selected through an RFP, a request for proposals that's actually going to be released tomorrow. And that's uh, going to be uh, having, asking for service providers uh, who are providing direct services uh, to improve and expand holistic wellness in African-American communities here. And that's going to be released tomorrow. That'll be open for five weeks. Um, in total, both of those solicitations will be uh, bring out a million dollars in funding uh, over a, a one-year period of time. So we're excited that those dollars are all moving, um, really all towards the effort, um, ultimately, to establish an African-American holistic wellness hub here in Contra Costa County which is also under works right now. So um, yeah, a lot of stuff going on. Um, and, and maybe one more announcement that might be of interest to the folks here. Uh, we're partnering with the Contra Costa County Bar Association. They are going to be um, uh, presenting and reenactment of the five pivotal, pivotal cases that led to the Brown versus Board of Education ruling. Uh, it's the 70 year anniversary this year of that ruling. Uh, so in celebration of that event, uh, that's what the Bar Association is doing. Um, they're going to be doing this reenactment here at our county board chambers. Um, I'm, remember, I'm forgetting that date. Do you have it? I think it's October. <laughs> October 8th. Yep, the 8th. The 8th in the evening. Um, so we've uh, put out the invitation to our public defender and our district attorney's offices because attorneys can get... Uh, the MCLEs, I guess, mandatory continuing learning credits or something like that, um, uh, but just by attending. Um, so hopefully uh, that attracts some attendance. But we're opening it to the entire community uh, so they can just participate, learn, contribute to that conversation. Um, but Matt, we'd love to also invite um, folks from the courts. I'm sorry we didn't extend that invitation to you directly, but uh, if any folks in here. Yeah, pick up. Great. Right, this is actually the first time I've heard about it. I have fallen off the, um, I, 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 I used to be a member of the CCC, so I, I would get it direct, but if they've announced it, I have to see it. Okay, I'll send you some. Thank you. I'll send you some. And we also uh, are reaching out to uh, our education partners, such as Office of Education, because young people will be uh, presenting and reading some of the scripts uh, that react those cases. So um, it, hopefully it'll be fun. <laughs> yeah, and I hope folks will come out. That's on October 8th. Um, in the evening. We do have a digital flyer and I'll send that out to, should I send it to every, maybe you can, I'll send it out to this entire our job group. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Sure. See your hand up. Yes, I, I, I don't have so much of an announcement as a request for clarification to, may I? Mm -hmm. Um. These announcements that were just made, we, we uh, as part of the oversight body, and in an effort to, we, we often talk about working directly with the community engagement, commu uh, the community engagement committee. And I just want to know how are the, how is this information getting out to the public? There was a number of RFPs just announced and, um, Events just announced. And I'm going to tell you, I'm a contracting officer. And this is the first time I'm hearing, Avi. A lot of people aren't going directly to the website. And if you're doing things that is directly affecting the Black and Brown community, um, is it being advertised in the Black media? Is it being put into the post? Is it being put on the post website? And then how are we getting that out to the community? Are we working directly with the community engagement committee to make sure the community knows and that the community has input in this? It's just a point of clarification. I know I didn't want to go into a big dialogue about it, but I do want to make sure that we don't have this huge conversation that happened the last time when an RFP went out and it became a point of contention once the contract was awarded from um, ORESJ. So, I do think that as the oversight body, 
we have an obligation to make sure that we're working in conjunction with the this data subcommittee on the community engagement and the entire oversight body is working directly with the community to make sure they know what's being uh, happening and that is affecting them. We're going directly to the community, not once something is decided or once something has happened, but at the very onset. And the fact that something is due tomorrow and we're being told to tell people or something is happening next week on the 8th and now we're telling the community is problematic. Yes, Paulo. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Any other announcements? All right, if no more announcements, we can, oh, sorry. Did I miss it? Okay. Uh, we can move to public comment. Um, this part of the agenda is for any public comment on items under this jurisdiction of the committee and not on this agenda. I will now open it up for any public comment at this time. Okay, hearing and seeing none. So then we'll move to our uh, review and approve the record of action from the August 22nd, 2024 data subcommittee. Thank you, Gariana, for putting that on the screen. Give folks a few minutes to review it. And then if we can have motion to approve. I move that we approve the record of action. I'll second. Thanks, Patrice. It was cool second. I'm sorry. Oh, gotcha. Thank you. Um, Gariana, can we have a roll call vote? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Before we do that, I always forget the order. Public comment first and then a vote. <laughs> so I'll open it up for public comment. Um, if there are any at this time. All right, hearing and seeing none, we can go into a vote. Shannon? I'm oh, sorry, Shannon, I couldn't hear you. Yes. Oh, okay. Beto Garibay? Yes. Patrice Guillory? Yes. Gilbert Salinas? Yes. And Shayla Bonner. Yes. Motion carries. And then the next item on our agenda is to receive an update and discuss next steps for polling of different agencies on data collection. I think this is you, Patrice, if I'm not mistaken. I believe so. I don't want to remember what the actual update really is all about here. So uh, last time we spoke, um, we did provide um, an update to the subcommittee on um, our requests to the different um, agencies represented on um, the R job in terms of their data capacity um, challenges, issues, and or you know existing capacity uh, related to collection of information uh, that. Um, are relate to certain data points that we would like to see holistically across uh, the entire system. And so we did hear back, at least in writing from the sheriff's office, uh, we, uh, I think probation, we put a, a verbal update. We had a writing, uh, something in writing from um, the public defender's office, then also office of ed, um, as well as uh, the courts were able to share out um, here during the meeting. Uh, we've not yet, I think we still have not yet heard from the district attorney's office, correct, uh, Gariana? And then Gilbert, I'm not sure if there was anything more that you're able to share or add, but I think we were still waiting to hear back from um, health services as well. And I don't know if it's included in here. I don't think the question, the original questions were included in, in this particular packet. Um, but needless to say, some of the major data points or, or pieces of information that we were polling agencies around is 
specific demographic information, if that's something that they're collecting, um, any um, social health related indicators uh, that can be collected among their respective clientele, and then any justice uh, system or processing related uh, questions that if, if it had to do with that respective department. So obviously, at health services, they meant that may not necessarily apply to you, but there may be other respective um, data points that would be imperative to, to know or, or learn about, such as maybe what's happening down in detention health with the jail population, and then any disciplinary actions uh, at the school site level or expulsions and things like that, which we do know they're able to provide that. So uh, that's sort of, in a nutshell, the type of polling um, that was uh, done or a set of questions that were asked of, of the agencies. I think we also asked what the folks would like to see um, across the board. What are some other imperative information you'd like to see collected from, from agencies um, that could be, that could give an indication of where certain racial disparities exist and or a potential opportunity to um, inform what types of interventions uh, would be uh, necessary to then address the, those disparities. I think I captured that uh, all from our last discussion. But is anything else anybody else would like to add? Thanks, Patrice, for the update. Um, yeah, are there any questions at this time? Or any comments from committee members? If not, I will open it up for public comment on this item. The only other thing I would add, just to um, provide some more context, especially for folks who are on Zoom who weren't um, present at the last meeting, we did spend some time to talk about each agency's various data systems, some of the um, uh, challenges or barriers that they may have around data analysis. So even if they're, they are able to capture certain individual level data, um, doing the analysis of, of that information is often a challenge for folks, for some agencies. And so having um, the appropriate staffing and all of that and the resources that are necessary to do that kind of work is still um, a real challenge for folks. So th those are some other, you know, I think imperative um, points that um, we need to continue to lift up if for this subcommittee, we want to start to see more regular reporting across the board. Cheryl, I see your hand. Thanks for that. But I, I still continue to have a question as to, there's some legal requirements for reporting and there's some base requirements for what needs what the public needs to know. So I'm always puzzled as to why that why we continue to accept that is okay for any agency, law enforcement or otherwise, to say, well, we sure staff, so we can we can't get you the data that you need to know. The public needs to know the data. We sure staff, or we can analyze the data that we give you. We just give you the raw data. Why is that acceptable? And why should it be acceptable? I just struggle with that. I struggle with why the in the and the public continues to struggle. This is why this continues to come up in in meetings. This is why it continues to be a a, a want or a desire of the public to know. They don't have a problem uh, uh, arresting people or holding people or charging people, then you should not have a problem giving us the information. It might be a rhetorical question.
I think it's a great question to ask. Um, yeah. And I know it is something that um, community and the public, you know, want to know. Like, they always want to know the data. And, um, and I know we've also had challenges of, like, where are we housing that data? How are we getting it out to community? Um, so that's also been a challenge, too. Uh, but I do, I hear you loud and clear about, you know, it shouldn't be acceptable for folks to just be like, oh, well, we don't have the staff to do it or we don't have this. But I honestly don't know the answer to that question. Like, how do we get these agencies to provide something that they are, you know, required to to do? So, Well, I think that there's something that we need to we, we need to figure out. Um, not just this committee, but from uh, the oversight body level and bring in the supervisors as well because it is also their responsibility, right? But that is that is a it's it's just a requirement. And I think we we continue year after year after year to accept the response that it's, well, we don't have it and we don't have the manpower to get it done. But you continue to have the manpower to arrest people. Then you should have the red man power to tell us who was arrested, when were they arrested, what's what is the demographics of the people that who were arrested, what were the charges, or no, or what who was was there a charge? If there wasn't, fine, no problem. Who was held? Who was not? Who's in the system? Who is not? This is not that hard. It's not. It's not that difficult. And if it is that difficult, then why is it that difficult? And if you're asking for money every year in the budget, which we just saw recently, then where is that money going for? Then part of that budget needs to be, well, we, we need a data analyst. But don't tell me that you cannot tell us what, what, what you're doing in the job that you're being paid to do. I can't come to work and tell them that, well, I can give you the information, but I can I can't, I can only do one third of my job because, you know. Add another manpower to do the data analysis. You won't have to do that part yourself. And I think we, it's, it's at some point we have to say that no, is not acceptable and move on and, and force them to do what we need them to do so we can answer the public. Every year we go through this. Thank you. Any other comments? Um. Agenda item. Go ahead. Kendra. I was just going to thank Cheryl and say one um, one action item out of this polling that I thought would be helpful was for. Um, well, actually, what I want to say is we know that there's been polling done before um, in previous years of the data capacity and infrastructure of the different agencies that are um, a part of our job. But I think this this time, one one piece of information that our office um, is finding helpful is just to know for currently what the needs are, what the what the issues are, so that we can also um, just be informed as we're communicating with supervisors, working with the equity committee. Um, given you know, given we're now um, coming on board to to support to support the work of our job. Um, something that you lifted up, Cheryl. I wanted to also lift up in terms of the. Our job will need to think about what we want to bring to the equity committee. We're hoping to have a joint um, our job equity committee meeting at some point after um, after the new members are onboarded and um, we have a chance to have a retreat and sort of talk about priorities of the body, um, priorities for this coming year. Um, and, you know, I think we've we've had a couple of conversations that um, but haven't come to a consensus yet about what are the what do we want to bring to the equity committee? What do we want to bring um, so that we can share with them, with the board of supervisors? These are the challenges that our job is facing in terms of its charge. Um, and Cheryl, to the point that you're making, if this is the same conversation um, that has happened and it just feels like a, we're stuck, um, we need some more support. We need some more support from supervisors. We need, you know, the support of our office. We're trying as fast as we can to learn about what the challenges are so that we can um, be bringing forward 
solutions in partnership with our job, but be bringing forward solutions to the equity committee and board of supervisors. But I just want to say, I, you know, I think I'm hopeful. I, I hope that in these next, um, in the coming months, like our plan to sort of do a survey and recruiting new men, we can start to um, make a plan. I know it's not immediate. I know, you know, the next meeting we won't have this solved, but um, I do want to say, Cheryl, I'm I I I hear you. I'm I hear that um concern, and you're not the you you know I've heard it in several meetings from other folks also, um, and you know a part of what we're trying to do, and I think you'll hear maybe in the next agenda item also when we talk about diversion efforts and sort of like some data collection. That's a part of that. Um, <clears throat> that's a starting place, but I'd be curious what what other folks think. Um, but I just wanted to say that that I hear you. I didn't want to let the moment go without saying that I hear what you're saying and um, working and we're working on, um, you know, trying to get out of that place of just feeling like the work is just cyclical. We're just having cyclical conversations and not getting anywhere. Thanks, Kendra. Anyone else? I don't want to miss anyone. Okay. Um, I guess as far as like next steps, Patrice, on this specific um, item, were we trying to reach back out to agencies? Or are we just kind of waiting to hear back from, from folks? I know we're still, you said we're waiting from a response from the DA's office. I'll be honest with you. I'm not quite sure what the next step should be. So I'm definitely open to hearing uh, what others think. Like I said, we the only <clears throat> the only other justice, and, and keep in mind, this polling was initially just for county agencies. We certainly were not um, thinking of reaching out to the police departments. Um, and this was, so all of this is iter iterative, right? One piece is is building up for the next piece which we're gonna hear in a little bit about the diversion survey and the work that Peter and Kendra are looking to do. Um, but just to kind of wrap this point up, um, we have not heard back from the district attorney's office and then also from uh, from health services um, in regards to their data capacity. But we, I mean, not lack of a better term, we, kind of know what health services is able to to uh, provide data wise in terms of terms of their data capacities I mean we just looked at their atlas literally the last meeting mm -hmm. so they're fully capable um but uh we've not heard the the only missing justice agency we've not heard back from would be district attorney's office okay sounds good um I guess with that being said if there's no more comments on this agenda item, we can move to the next one, which is to review and discuss survey questions in the Contra Costa County diversion efforts and programs. Um, All right. Um, so, Thanks for yeah, moving thank the mic around too. Thanks guys. <laughs> Like I need a handheld one. <laughs> um, so yeah, thank you. Uh, this item on the agenda, I think, dovetails really nicely and is a good segue from the last item. So I, I wanted to kind of reserve some of my comments on that last item uh, since I knew I'd uh, presenting this item with, along with Kendra. So um, much of what was just discussed regarding data sharing, the challenges that folks have been uh, experiencing and still experience, um, you know, that that really has led us to uh, focusing a lot on the issue of data. Um, you know, Kendra and I were really excited about um, kind of taking the reins from ORJ uh, as, as the main staff that's for, for this body. So um, over the next several months, that transition is going to occur. We've actually um, sent an email and signal to all the our job members um, about this transition. And, you know, that transition is going to entail Kendra and I in our office just meeting with all the different members uh, to paint ourselves with them so they can get to know us, uh, but also really hear from folks about you know, their, their vision and, and goals for our job and some of the challenges. 
Um, so we'll have more more comprehensive update on what that transition is going to uh, entail uh, at a future at the larger our job um, convening for the whole body. Um, but just wanted to kind of put that out there. But as we have been preparing for the transition, uh, one one area that we noticed. Um, for all the reasons that you all just discussed, and Cheryl, thank you for your comments. You spoke a lot of this. Was that you know when it comes to data, uh, there there hasn't been as much momentum or as progress over the last several years around this, which is a dated goal for our job, right? How do we improve the collection, the analysis, the sharing, and the dissemination of data when it comes to um, our criminal justice systems and all of our partners here in Contra Costa County, particularly when it comes to racial inequities and disparities. And we're, we're, we're all about that, we want to support that. So we've been leaning into that before we even uh, you know, have taken the reins for transition. We've been already talking to folks about you know, how can we move and, and jumpstart uh, some of this data work. Uh, so what we, after having talked to the leaders of our, of our criminal justice partners here in the county, so just as Patrice said, uh, we've not yet uh, expanded out to say local police departments, just um, you know, not the only reason, but part of the reason is that as a county department, we don't have jurisdiction over those local police departments. We do want to build and nurture relationships with them, and of course, we need them at this table. Um, but uh, you know, in the passing time, we said, let's start first with our county uh, departments, public defender, district attorney, as well as our sheriff and our probation departments. Um, and I just want to say, in all of our conversations, we're really encouraged. Everyone said, yeah, we're ready. We're, we're at that point where we want to improve how we work with data. Um, each department said that there's um, no um, reluctance uh, to do that other than the capacity issue, other than that folks at varying degrees are uh, having capacity issues. And that speaks to like both full power, like you know, just having enough staffing in place to kind of do the work because this the data work is, is a lot or technology capacity. Some folks just don't have the systems in place yet. Um, and there's always the question of like, different departments use different systems. So how are we really trying to kind of do this thing collectively if folks are just you know, operating differently? Um, so those are all the kind of challenges that uh, people have, have spoken to. So, but because there is the willingness and the appetite on everyone's part to want to get better at this, and because it is a goal of our job, um, our office, we're, we're hoping that once we fully transition to the role, uh, that in the coming year, the data piece be one of the primary goals that we really have all hands on deck, wrap our arms around and focus on in 2025. Um, but we, we have to kind of be focused on this, right? So how do we do that? We wanted to first choose a single kind of area that we work on to start sketching out what the actual protocols and processes can be, should be, when it comes to sharing and, and collecting data and ultimately disseminating it. Um, and so that topic area is going to be around the uh, diversion and diversion efforts and programs here in the county. Um, but diversion is a big topic. It, it, it's defined differently depending on who you ask. Um, so what we're going to do is first disseminate a survey. And we're, we're also first just focusing on those four criminal justice agencies that I named. Um, and eventually, we're going to then expand out to our education partners here. We want to include the health department. And then, of course, we want to start including community-based organizations who are doing diversion work and um, you know, see how far out we can then expand our reach. Uh, but first, focusing on our four criminal justice agencies. And the first step is this survey that we're going to about walk, we're going to walk through in a second and solicit some feedback from folks here. Um, but that really is just going to be the entryway to kind of get people to think about diversion, um, which again, just the focus uh, to get us at that bigger question of data much more broadly. Um, but Ted and I are already talking to um, a couple of different research partners. One um, is to do some qualitative analysis. Once we get this survey out and get some real preliminary rough data just on what diversion looks like here in the county, um, we would then want to do some more qualitative interviews with our different partners, uh, to ask some of those more um, nuanced questions. Uh, quite frankly, Cheryl, that you brought up, like what exactly are the challenges? Maybe what are some of those requirements that all departments are mandated to meet? Um, but then also, what are some of the legal requirements that they also have to honor that are challenges to sharing data around confidentiality and things of that nature? So we can just get a really solid grasp on what some of the barriers might be, but also where the opportunities are. Um, 
The next step is then we're going to be working with another research partner to do more of the quantitative analysis and do more of the bigger kind of quantitative um, work around looking at the data that's collected, the data that exists, and then being able to do kind of a more system-wide analysis of how diversion is working here in our county, um, where are, again, successes and where the opportunities for growth. Um, we're hoping that through that process, where we'll end up is saying, okay, look, we just went through a, a kind of pilot or a test scenario case where we came together, figured out where the opportunities and gaps are when it comes to data sharing, established some real practices some protocols to do this. Um, now let's go ahead and try to expand that to a different topic. And the different uh, leaders have kind of thrown out different areas that folks are interested in um, that are kind of coming down the pipe that are, are ripe for opportunity to look at that as the next data opportunity, whether it's Cal Aim, how that's gonna be implemented, um, or looking at, I think, from the community's perspective, what we've heard is also at the different kind of um, metrics that they wanna see in real time. Um, so that, that's really what we're building towards. Um, and again, addressing some of the comments earlier, part of our analysis is really gonna be informed by, we're gonna also have some community engagement, talk to community members, um, even though they've already said loud and clear and we've heard from them, but we wanna also go back and make sure like, what are those data points that folks wanna see collected in real time I mean, as consistently as possible? But again, to get there, we, we need to just hammer out the processes, right? So that's, that's our plan. That's the context in which we're couching this survey that we're about to talk about. So before we get into the survey from the members of the subcommittee, do you have any questions or comments to what I just shared in terms of the context uh, for this survey? The only comment I'd like to add is that at our last meeting, we did look at um, uh, a sample data sharing agreement that was done down in Santa Clara. Uh, Santa Barbara, I've been looking at way too many counties lately. <laughs> Santa Barbara County, um, where they created um, this sort of criminal justice dating data committee of all the same exact agencies, right, where they've made this agreement that they would share information um, for purposes like this. So I think, you know, everything you just shared, we're on track to maybe creating something similar that I think is going to be really helpful for us. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, we don't want to recreate the wheel if we don't have to. So having examples like that to right. build off of those tweet um, is going to be uh, incredibly important. Yes, really glad that you guys have already done that. Any, any other questions from any of the committee members, even those online? I, okay. do, I do have a Go quick ahead. question. Um, yep. So for the, so I'm reading it. The second phase will consist of interviews to do deeper dives around how people define and apply diversion. Who are those yeah. people, I guess? Who will we be, who will you all be interviewing? Will it be CBOs? Will it be community members, department heads? Sorry if I missed that part. No, uh, that not, thank you for that. The, so the first phase is going to be the four justice agencies here in the county, the public defender, the district attorney, um, probation, and the sheriff's office. Uh, and then the second phase will include community-based organizations that offer diversion programming um, and, and in partnership with the county, as well as our health department, which would include behavioral health, and our educational partners. Um, but just one caveat, and it will maybe this is a good way to segue into the survey is we're going to be asking folks how they define diversion because diversion is defined differently. But to, to get a sense of that landscape and how people are defining it. But for this survey and then for this study, we're really going to be diving into diversion in the more traditional sense um, in terms of programs that actually offer um, either a reduction of um, uh, uh, charges or uh, or actually a, a dismissal of charges, um, things that actually divert people away from deeper engagement in the criminal justice system, um, and not as much on, say, the preventative programs um, that folks often put under the umbrella of diversion. We're actually going to be focusing just first on those more formal uh, programs. Um, yeah, that, that was, that, yes, that's the focus. So, for instance, uh, if you're looking at it from a CBO perspective, Shayla, um, mm -hmm. I think the program over at RISE that has a formal mm -hmm. uh, agreement and, and partnership with, uh, I believe it's uh, 
this district attorney's office and receiving yeah. referrals. Yep, that would be a, a that would be an example of a more formal diversion program that would be included. Okay, thank you for that, um, Cheryl. I'll see your hand. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go backwards a little bit, and and Christopher, I'm going to ask you to assist, give me an assist on this one. But we've done a lot of this work especially with the definition of diversion. Our diversion subcommittee has done a lot of this heavy lift on defining uh, what diversion is uh, and what it looks like with CBOs. And uh, we've done a lot of this. So I, I'm just trying to figure out why would why it's being done again? Because and and Shelley, I think you were on the committee with me when we did some of this, but we've done a lot of this this part. So um, with with the um, public defender's office, with the the with many of these organizations you just talked about. So I'm just trying to figure out why we're doing it again, and what. What the purpose is of doing it again instead of actually taking some action. And just so you know, this is why the public gets frustrated because we're doing things again that we just did two, three years ago. And we've been doing for two, three years and we keep picking data, 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 but then there's nothing done with it. So what is the aim of going out and doing again what we just did 22, 23? And, and I mean, it took us a couple of years to define diversion in all of these forms and to come up with a definition that we put forth to the Board of Supervisors that we could use countywide. Uh, so I, I, I gave them confused that we're going to now go back and do it again and we're going to change this definition now that we all put so much work into to, to, to coming up with. I do want to respond to that first. Uh, so Cheryl, much of the reason why we're picking diversion is because of the work that you all did. And the focus of our work is not going to be to come and rehash and focus just on a definition of diversion. We just want to uh, front load that question because we want to make clear from the outset what definition we're focused in on for the sake of the, of the study. Um, but again, the purpose of working on this diversion, uh, on diversion is just really as a test case to get at those bigger questions around process. Because uh, what, we're, what we're seeing, and please, if, if the work in the diversion committee, if you guys um, actually have done this work as well, I, I please let us know. But it's the processes that haven't been quite uh, fully fleshed out and established and then concretized and then actually codified across these departments to say, this, these are the processes and protocols that we need in place to feel comfortable, to feel safe, and to then effectively share the data. Um, because of all the work that the, the diversion committee has done, and again, because there is a diversion subcommittee, that's why another that added to why we wanted to go with this, because we have two committees that can actually work together on a shared goal. We're thinking like, how do we actually find some shared goals across committees that can work together? Um, so again, it's, the focus is not to just de define diversion, just, just that's for clarity's sake in the beginning. The focus is going to be like, what are the processes and protocols needed to share data with diversion being the first case? Uh, over time, we want to build then to a much more broader uh, um, focus in terms of what data we collect and how we collect data. I, I don't know if that, does that answer the question, Cheryl? Does that make it a little less confusing? Tell me. And if, if my understanding was that the diversion subcommittee, a lot of the work that you all have been working on was to establish uh, a criteria by which mm -hmm. then can be adopted by primarily the district attorney's office, correct? So that was more aiming for policy development, whereas this effort is to get us to a place where we can establish some um, data collection management processes across all of the agencies to doing so by utilizing a specific research project or question, which in this case would be diversion. So um, unless I'm mistaking what the, the efforts of the diversion subcommittee have been engaged in. It, it was both. It was to come up with a definition that it could be used countywide so we don't have everybody using all of these different definitions. It wasn't just for that. It was 
it was to have a definition that was uh, universal and had all of these subparts to it. If you go back and look at the, at the committee notes and, and the presentation that was made to the oversight body and to that was going to be presented to, to the supervisors, it, it had that goal to it. So while I understand what you just said, both of you, I, I, I think I'm still wanting to know what, what the goal is here if it doesn't, because to me, the survey doesn't say what you said. I mean, I understand the survey and I, I, I don't have a problem with it. I just say that if, if we've done this work, I, I would like to see us advance more to, to, to getting into action. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I don't think if we if we don't have to again recreate the wheel or, or be re, we want to reduce redundancies as much as possible. Um, yes, yeah, so on our part, we uh, anything that the subcommittee, the division subcommittee, has produced over the last several years, we were absolutely feed it to our researchers, uh, make sure they incorporate it and eliminate the need to ask further questions. Uh, again, this survey. Um, yeah. If if this survey feels redundant to folks, and that's why we were bringing it to this committee to have feedback you know, go ahead and give us their feedback, then we'll, we'll switch it up. But again, it really was to kind of get a sense of like really then how do we just kickstart the, the conversation that when our researcher comes in to actually do the interviews. Christopher, Chris, <laughs> Chris, go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you. So uh, first of all, let me just say, uh, I missed you, Cheryl. It's been a while, you know. Thank you uh, for making your way on back to us, you know, in grand fashion, picking right up where you left off. It's much appreciated. Um, so to to follow up on not only what what um, you know Cheryl has brought up so far, but also to pick up a thread from last meeting. Um, I think some of some of the confusion is, I think. Um, you know, a couple of us, um, but definitely myself in this meeting uh, um, the last time we met, talked about uh, trying to find all of this stuff uh, that Cheryl is referring to, because it is many years, it's several years old. Uh, it's not even from 22, 23. It's not even from 21. I only just found it. Um, which is why the emails that I promised did not get sent, but I'll send them, you know, right after this meeting. It was actually an October meeting of 2020 where the diversion subcommittee created a, a definition of diversion with a bunch of statements applied to it as to who diversion should be for, how people should be included, so on and so forth, uh, to provide as many opportunities as possible, as well as that, that, conversation or that thread about um, the existing programs at the time. As we said last time, again, this is coming up on a full four years old, so it's not like it won't need much updating, but it exists. It didn't exist on my computer because that has changed over that amount of time. That's why I couldn't find it um, and had to actually manually dig through every uh, agenda online until I could find it, but it was October 15th, 2020. So um, there is a definition that uh, was put forth uh, to be used countywide uh, as a definition and some, some standards or application standards of diversion. Um, and there's a, a list as of that, that time uh, of active diversion programs. Some of those are formal, some of those were um, informal, um, quite a quite a list or a, you know, a smorgasbord for lack of a better term of uh, programs or uh, actions that people were taking to provide people um, alternatives to incarceration for certain types of offenses. Um, so I'll make sure that you all have that. Um, it would be worth looking at. I don't know that, um, you know, in terms of having the conversation or asking these questions, I don't know that it changes much because I think it's a good idea. Um, despite the fact that Diversion put this definition forward, um, I, that's not necessarily the definition that 
any of these agencies would know or would have seen by this point, even though it is four years later. So getting a sense, you know, of what folks think uh, diversion is and maybe having a conversation centered on uh, that definition that, you know, so many people, um, you know, as members of this body, as well as members of the public did weigh in on might be a good way to move it forward. Uh, but there is uh, some information that was, you know, worked on quite diligently to come up with uh, all of that. So then I have a question. So that definition then that you're uh, mentioning, Chris and Cheryl, is that, a, uh, I guess I'm hearing two different things. I think Cheryl was mentioning that that was a definition that I, I may, or may have incorporated um, the viewpoints or what have you of the various agencies because it, it more or less correlated with any existing diversion programs, correct? Or is that a, 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 a definition that was formulated by the di diversion subcommittee and these agencies are not aware of it? Yeah, so it's it's the latter. Um, this the probably spearheaded by the diversion subcommittee and then ultimately with the body weighing in, you know, is the definition that we developed, um, you know, for the purpose of, um, you know, trying to expand uh, diversion or part of the part of the uh, the process of trying to expand diversion eligibility. Uh, who is diversion for? Who is it not for? Um, what types of um, I think there were ca uh, not caveats, but there were specific things ironed out, such as. Uh, as many places as diversion is possible. So if it's if it's uh, pre arrest, if it's pre prosecution, if it's post adjudication, like we want programs uh, or or opportunities at every different point as much as possible uh, to make an impact on uh, who's coming into the system um, and try to reduce that footprint as much as possible. So it said it had statements in it like that. Um, just to make sure when we're talking about diversion and, and looking to make changes as far as eligibility that we're clear on, you know, who, who this should apply to, um, and how we would like, or what equity essentially would demand that, uh, people consider in terms of how diversion is, uh, assigned or administered. Um, and like I said, I don't think most people, despite us, you know, taking action, from there, um, I think putting that forth uh, to the Board of Supervisors as a recommendation, that sort of thing. Um, I don't think this is something that was publicized in a way that if you were to ask the questions that are in front of us right now, anybody else outside of this body would spit out a definition, anything like that, um, or necessarily refer to those things, especially not directly. Um, so I, I think it's still important to whether it's asking a question, whether it's having a conversation about these different sort of standards or tenets, um, trying to get some agreement or some consensus around what we mean uh, when we say diversion and how we want to apply it to make sure that it is, you know, a, a viable option within the county uh, as often as possible uh, is still going to be really important. So maybe as an addendum to this survey could be the diversion committee's um, definition and get some reactions from the, the various um, departments. Yeah, I, I think that's a great idea. I also think if we can see that document that Chris, you, you were able to locate, I mean, we can just use the definition that's on that document as, as the, the definition survey. that the survey is asking people to respond to. Um, I didn't idea. know that there was all that all that work already done. So, um, but but I'm also hearing you say, Chris, though, is because it was done all, at least four years ago. Um, I mean, so my question is, do do you feel? And I'm asking Chris, since you have the definition of it, this survey still feels relevant. It still feels like something that we should do, or, or is it is it still appropriate? Now, the question still um, relevant. Definitely, because again, a, a lot of so, especially when we're talking about uh, certain programs, like what current diversion efforts or programs does your department offer, those things would have changed. We we have some things that may even 
you know, uh, give information in terms of places that or, or offices that maybe you didn't name yet uh, that you might need to, you know, include in the survey because of, you know, programs that they've had existing in the past. Those programs may not exist now. So I think it's worth getting an update in terms of what is actively available in the county for sure. Um, but you may have some of the legwork done if, you know, let's say uh, a good amount of uh, the programs that are listed um, still exist, right, or are existing in any way, then then some of this work you've already done. But there's bound to be some level of update, some level of change, something that may exist now that didn't exist then or vice versa in that amount of time. Great. Yeah. And I think there was a comment here saying there's also probably been new staff added to these different organizations over the last four years. So um, that's what that's to have to be accounted for as well. So no, that's that's great. I'm glad to know that there's this this information and this work that's already been done. So reducing legwork is important. We I'm down for that. And uh, no, we we can incorporate that definition in here as well. Um Maybe we can go ahead and move into the survey now and then and walk through it if, unless there are other comments. But I just want to reiterate and, and again emphasize um, the, the ultimate goal for this is again to really establish some processes and protocols for people to become um, comfortable with, familiar with, and so we can just get in the regular practice here in the county of sharing data together, right? Um, and what we've also heard as we talk to different folks that another one of the challenges but on capacity is also that just data is such a large topic and it's so so many caveats and nuances uh involved you know what kind of data you're collecting and depending on what effort or what area so it's helpful to just hone in on a very specific question or or project or area to first begin on and that's why we're We've, we've come across diversion, which is an area that everyone agreed upon. So yeah, I think there's there's readiness there. And I think a lot of it is because the last four years, there has been a lot of work on diversion already. I'm sure it's a lot because of the work that started here in this, or in this in this body. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and walk through the survey. Um, thank you for sharing it, uh, Gariana, up on the screen. Um, I, I don't know if, uh, necessary that we actually read line by line, but um, we can give folks a, a chance if you haven't already to just read through it. Um, and we'll just open it up for conversation. Um, what I'll do is uh, once folks have read it, I'll ask if folks have any specific questions, edits, suggestions per, per question. But we'll give folks a couple minutes first. A couple more minutes? No? Okay. Uh, so I think we've talked a lot about kind of the goal and purpose of this survey. Uh, so we'll just jump right into the questions. Uh, the first one is to just kind of get a landscape of uh, what are the different practices and processes that people are currently uh, utilizing in lieu of a traditional justice system response? Thinking about that. Um, any, any questions, any suggestions, any thoughts around this first question? Yeah, Matt. So you see it, how is the different, how is question one different from question two? I think here is kind of giving people the opportunity to um, raise a certain effort that may not be a traditional 
version opportunity uh, in how we're defining it maybe, but um, does work as alternatives to, um, you know, traditional processes, the criminal justice processes. Um, or not formal. Yeah, or yes, that part. Yeah. Not formal. You know, can people hear this? I feel like my voice is probably all loud and put it back in the middle. What did you make you think? I mean, so this is the test case. If you asked that question, Matt, what would you, how would you answer it? What would you think? Well, it seems, I mean, I, I guess, I guess where that's coming from is if the goal of this is to, is to get, is to dig into diversion programs, uh, question two, does that, and I, whether we, whether you have a definition for it or not, or however you decide to end up doing that, that's what question two does. Uh, my concern, my question one is it, it's a little bit broad and interpretive. Right. What's a process? What's a practice? What's even a traditional justice system response can be different for different people. I'm not saying the question isn't worth asking. I'm just wondering if maybe it gets asked later after people have gone through all the diversion stuff that you really want to get at. You say at the end, is there any other kind of program or process that isn't even even this exact language works a little bit later after after people thought about diversion itself uh, to kind of capture what they may not think what they not have thought of earlier on. It's just strategic for me in my mind. And I am not, you know, it's a, it's a suggestion, but it, it's a it's a broad question to start with. I think if you started with number two, you go right into what you're after. Actually, number four is probably the qualifier for number one. Yeah. Oh, that is, look at that, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a good point. So yeah, I mean, to qualify, maybe somehow incorporating question one into number four, mm -hmm. that gives people space to find out the full answer. So maybe, yeah. Mm -hmm. What I'm hearing the suggestion is we just start off with question number two and somehow fold into question number four with some of the language from question number one. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I, you know, I agree with Patrice. They, they do. Mm -hmm. They overlap for sure. Yeah. Any, any thoughts from folks online? Uh, thank you. Yeah. Um, I'll have a number two, which then would now be the first question around just asking what are some current efforts being offered? And that, that stuff in that bold italics, I mean, we're, we're trying to be as conscious as possible of like survey fatigue, right? We don't want, you know, people want people having to repeat themselves. So um, questions two and three are the ones that would need to be answered per program if a department is offering multiple diversion programs. But question number four is open. That just only needs to be open once. I answered once. Also on question two. If it's going to be with three answered for each program, maybe two and three can just go together. And you know, for each program, I mean, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know if that's an advantage. It would, it would sort of allow everyone to, to think about it conceptually within within the one question. Okay. Like referencing like electronic home detention. That one I think is going to be for four. Oh, four, right? Yeah. So that's what he's saying, like wanting to create space. If your agency doesn't necessarily have a direct diversion, formal diversion program or process, but there are other things that you would probably consider, like alternative to custody, pretrial monitor. Or yeah, that's what you have. That that could be articulated in that last question. Because by I mean, because I in, in very practical terms, it does divert people from jail time. They don't have to be detained, but it doesn't necessarily impact the charges that are in that person's uh, mm -hmm. history or sentencing. I guess so. It it, it it we should have space for people to offer that. But mm -hmm. um, when we're talking to researchers, they're saying like in terms of actual, like it's a little bit like you're comparing apples with oranges when you look at outcomes if the programs have different. Objectives, yeah. So they say, you know, 
if you want something that's kind of meaningful at the end in terms of a real assessment and to be able to kind of uh, give a good analysis on outcomes. A good analysis on outcomes, then you're going to have to uh, be a lot more specific as to what you're asking about. That was a suggestion. Uh, then how about three uh, in terms of for each pepper program? Now these kind of, this just kind of gives them an injury of each conversion program. Um, did we miss anything? Did anything feel unnecessary? Or for folks from the agencies that we're going to share this survey with, uh, do any of these do all these feel answerable? That's a good question too. One thing that you noted uh, or um, that I noticed is not is missing here. So you have what is the eligibility criteria? I would add, but what if any um, is there exclusionary criteria? Um, when I previously worked on the um, Coco Lee um, project, the diversion project um, here in the county. Um, a lot of effort went into developing not only just the, the exclusionary criteria, a lot of back and forth debating on what was considered suitable um, exclusion exclusionary offenses. Okay. So and that's going to give you a more balanced view of who gets access and who doesn't. Okay. So being specific on what is some exclusionary okay. exclusionary criteria. Thanks. Anything else? Uh, so I have one thing to add, and I don't know if this is uh, if this is maybe somewhere else in this in this document um, so far. Uh, so forgive me if that is the case, but curious about um, folks who who did not successfully complete, and if there's any information as to why. I'm glad you said it, Christopher. I have I have that question, but I also have not just the monitoring question, but I also my question would be the determination of who makes the determination of because I think mean, it's good you say here about the diversion effort in the program, but who's making who's Who's at the, I guess I want to know who's at the table. Who's at the table? At your department. Who's at the table? Is it people who've been formally... Formally... Oh, no, who, who's at the table making the determination about what programs to offer in the department? Who's at the table and who's left out? So I think it's to 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 just say it quickly, um is it people who who have been impacted who are helping to to craft those programs so that you you have programs with meaning and understanding or is it academia is it from an academic standpoint how do you determine what programs to offer so and another question would be uh, and I think that's a great question. I'm just curious, is that something for the survey or is that something for the qualitative interviews when uh, researchers are sitting down with people and ask like in a conversation? I think it's part of number two and I don't know how you ask it, but I think it's part of number two. If you're asking about the programs themselves, I think that you you got to know the background of how you came up with that program, right? I how did you determine that that was the best program to offer? I was going to say one clean way to ask ask it that could be a little straightforward is um, uh, who are your designers of this program and see what kind of responses you get from that. Yeah, or, or even maybe like, because uh, something we're anticipating is uh, another question after we go through the survey is to ask this group, 
as we then, you know, it's good to go. We want to disseminate who in the department should we send it to? Uh, I, I'm thinking, who are the people that actually know the answers to these questions? And they're probably going to be the people who implement, people who have the program knowledge, not so much director level. Yeah. Um, but because of that, I'm also anticipating some of those folks who say, I don't know the answer to that question, mm -hmm. right? Because maybe they're just, they were just given an assignment, or maybe they weren't around um, or at the table. In, in, how should I ask? So maybe the question is like, I don't know, how do we get it? Like, who are those folks that we should talk to that can kind of give that broader perspective and context? And who should we be approaching it during the interview? Um, because I think in the survey, I imagine folks are going to say, yeah, ask this person. They're the ones who actually have the information, who can run the data, um, and they may not be at decision making level. If that makes sense. I don't know. Folks did that, right? Yeah. I agree. See, Rachel has her hand up, but I also um, got a text from Gariana that we have a member that has to leave at 4.30, so we will lose quorum at that point, um, but I'll let um, Rachel go ahead. Thanks very much, I'll try to be quick. Um, I agreed with the solution, the suggestion to add exclusion criteria, um, but I think it could also be helpful to add like requirements of any diversion program. So for example, if restitution must be paid or any other types of fees, I think that would be a helpful data point to know um, you know, what could impact someone's ability to succeed on the program. Um, and then also, I guess, sometimes where there are diversion programs that may be discretionary, in other words, someone is not outright excluded based on their charges, but it's also not an entitlement. Um, what is the process in place to ensure that there are sort of consistent types of decisions made in those cases? Um, and for example, like, does it have to go through a supervisor? I, I think any clarity along those lines could be helpful information as well. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, given that uh, Shaley just said that this meeting is about to end, and I think we have another item I want to strike that. Uh, let me just quickly kind of recap. Um, for this survey, uh, we're going to strike question one because it seems like it's added. It's already asked the final question. So we may incorporate some of that one as well. Um, for two and three, we'll get, get better on languaging like that two and three are the questions to answer per program. And then the final question is just one answer total. Um, then looking at question number three uh, around eligibility criteria, also ask around any criteria that is exclusionary. Um, also then getting at the question around um, the discretionary question like who actually makes the determination if someone is eligible or not and, um i think that kind of speaks to something that she was asking i might play sure i was asking but sure your bigger question around who actually made the determination of what program should be even implemented i'm wondering i think we asked that a little bit in um or already people in terms of who isn't successful i think that was a question i'm sorry a question of who and how many did not complete and why? I think we can maybe ask some qualifying qualifiers in part E or F. How do you measure progress and success? What metrics did you use? Like, what are some reasons why people did not complete the program? And then to your bigger question around um, who makes the determination of what programs are to offer um, and who are the designers? Uh, I, I know I'm proposing that we actually try to ask that during the interview process for the folks who we know will have the answers, um, unless folks here feel like the people who are going to be assigned to answer the survey they probably know those answers. If you add to A on number one and ask, please include the name of the program. And then additional is what was the process or protocol used to select the program? Okay. And that would give you at least if they had a process in place. Okay. Yeah. And maybe even how long this, pro this program has been in place to kind of get us mm -hmm. to that too. Describe your selection process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cheryl, does that, does that kind of get at your question? If we put it in the, if not question two, maybe make it part C. Likely. What was the process? Yeah, likely. Sorry. Likely. And I, okay. I, I did want to bring to your attention when you talk about success from whose lens, right? The success from the lens of the agency is different from success from the lens of the person who 
is not incarcerated for kids uh, who is participating in the diversion program. So you get to stay home with your children versus being incarcerated. There's a different success factor. You get to go to work and not be incarcerated. There's a different success factor than, you know, from from the agency standpoint. So I would just, I would just say that we entertain success from different lenses and not, you know, that measurement is going to look different for different people. Maybe for F, we can re to that point. We can uh, reframe. Uh, I'm sorry, three F. Um, instead of saying how do we measure progress or success, but um, how is success defined within this program or for this program, or however you want to say it, and then um, how are they measuring that? But it, again, it, for who? I, I, I again, I'm because the survey is going to the the agencies. So it's, it's still them that Yeah, it should say how does the agency define measure. Progress success, not again. I, I I'm just saying, make that disclaimer. That is the agency's definition of progress or success. You understand what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Again, I'm trying to be conscious of time. I know we're gonna leave form in a second. Um. Maybe I can follow up with this group with an email and ask. Really, we're looking for contact people. Who should we send this survey to? Because um, once we go ahead and we'll we'll make the adjustments, send it back out to this subcommittee, and then if we get the same like, I, I we just want to start sending. We want to send it out. We want to know who to send. Please have the email. That work. Fine with me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll be sending out to the members of this subcommittee for that feedback. Any other questions before we wrap this item up? I know. We're oh, here. one more last. At, at after four, then you may want to have a statement or question, uh, a statement that um, you'll be following up with interviews. Um, who would they recommend? Thank you all. I really, really, you know, Kendra and I really, really appreciate um, this feedback. It helps. And, um, yeah, we're, we're just, we just we just want to start something, so we're we're excited that this is the first step. Great job! <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Thanks, Kendra. Um, and I know we got two minutes left. We do have one item left on the agenda, which is to identify the process to request additional information in the sheriff's quarterly report. And I think we kind of talked about this, um, in the last meeting. Um, but yeah, we got like literally one minute. <laughs> um, I guess maybe we could just ask, what's the process? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. What's the process? What's the process? <laughs> well, all I can tell you is that the board of suits, you know, requested to the sheriff. Um, so unless you're obtaining stuff from the Public Records Act, you'd have to request something in writing to the sheriff himself. There's no other real channel. So if something you see in the quarterly report is not to your satisfaction or you want something else that has to be requested, the sheriff can provide an answer on whether we have the ability to or um, if our systems actually can produce the data that you are requesting. Okay. So almost similar to what I think was done in the past to the district attorney's office on, it was actually, it was a letter from our job to the DA's office for similar data capacity or collection sort of questions, a similar letter, formal letter? Yes. Will we send it to you to, or email it directly to the sheriff? Yeah, it would not go through me. It would go directly to the sheriff. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. And I think that's okay. all we had time for today. Um, Again, thank you all for joining the meeting. Glad we were able to make it uh make it happen today. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for October twenty fourth. Um, and at this time, our meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.